The Romance languages are the most romantic languages of all, in the sense that every language in the world is tied for being the most romantic. In all seriousness, the Romance languages are a subfamily within Indo-European, native to Europe, primarily in the southern half of the continent. All Romance languages are descended from Latin, which was in turn part of the Italic branch of Indo-European, and was the main language of this obscure nation, you might have heard of it, it was called the Roman Empire, and in the centuries following its collapse, Classical Latin evolved into various forms of Vulgar Latin, which then evolved into the Romance languages we know today. The most prominent Romance languages are Spanish, French, Portuguese, Italian, and Romanian. There are plenty of other smaller Romance languages spoken across Europe as well. I'll be talking about 13 Romance languages in detail, and all the rest will at the very least get a mention. With that introduction out of the way, let's talk about some common features among Romance languages. As a whole, Romance languages are fusional, meaning they indicate grammatical inflection with suffixes which convey multiple pieces of grammatical information at once. All Romance languages have grammatical gender, with masculine and feminine genders present in all of them. Masculine nouns tend to end with vowels similar to o or with a consonant, while feminine nouns tend to end with a. Most nouns referring to people have different forms depending on the gender they refer to. Nouns have singular and plural forms, with the plural form by adding s, or with a change in the vowel. Nouns used to also inflect for case in Latin, but this was lost in the majority of Romance languages, only somewhat remaining in the pronouns, which have separate subject, direct object, and indirect object forms. They also tend to make extensive use out of a set of reflexive pronouns, used with reflexive verbs. Most Romance languages have the TV distinction, meaning there are separate formal and informal second-person singular pronouns, equivalent to you, and there are separate possessive determiners and possessive pronouns, equivalent to English my and mine respectively, which both tend to inflect for gender and number. Adjectives also agree for number and usually gender, and most of the time come after the nouns they modify, with a handful of exceptions, including adjectives which may come before or after the noun depending on if their sense is subjective or objective. The comparative and superlative are often formed with the same word, with the superlative preceded by a definite article. Alright, Romance languages have pairs of definite and indefinite articles, equivalent to English the and a, which agree with the gender and number of the nouns they describe. There are plenty of nouns, especially for people, that have the same base form, only differing in the inflection of their modifying adjectives, articles, and pronouns. Adverbs are typically formed by adding a suffix similar to mente to their adjective counterparts. Verb infinitives tend to end with ar, er, ir, or something similar, and verbs change depending on the subject, changing between the first, second, and third persons between both the singular and plural. There's also a distinction between the indicative mood, which is used for statements of fact, and the subjunctive mood used for wishes, emotions, opinions, and other not necessarily real actions. There are also the imperative and conditional moods, used for commands and conditions respectively. The different verb forms usually include the present tense, the simple past, future, imperfect, present perfect, pluperfect, and future perfect, with the subjunctive and conditional moods having fewer distinctions than the indicative. There are also passive forms, in addition to past and present participles. The perfect tenses tend to be formed with verbs meaning to have, and most Romance languages are pro-drop, meaning they can drop the subject pronoun if a conjugated verb is in the sentence. Contractions are also very common across Romance languages, particularly with pronouns, articles, and prepositions, and most of the languages have double negatives. The consonants and vowels vary from language to language, but most have the seven vowels a, e, i, o, a, o, u, or have a five vowel system like a, e, i, o, u. Many Romance languages also have a schwa or a in unstressed syllables, and the languages usually have the glides y and wa. Affricates and post alveolars are staples of Romance consonant inventories, as are palto ny and y. Being descended from Latin, all Romance languages currently use the Latin alphabet inheriting many spelling conventions from it. Most Romance languages have two different pronunciations for the letters C and G, one after A, O, or U, called hard C and G, and after E and I, 
referred to as soft CNG, though the exact sound of soft CNG varies from language to language. The digraph QU is often used for the sequence qua, and X usually represents xa or xa. K and W are rarely used outside of loanwords, but H is used, even though most Romance languages lost its corresponding sound, and standalone H is now silent. Some languages also use diaresis, to indicate that two vowels are pronounced separately and not as one. The majority of words in Romance languages are inherited from Latin, and there are a lot of learned borrowings from both Latin and Greek. A lot of the languages make frequent use of diminutives and a few augmentatives as well. Finally, we can start talking about these languages individually, starting with Spanish. Spanish is spoken in Spain, most of Latin America, part of the Caribbean, and don't you dare forget about Equatorial Guinea. In Spanish, baza and ga vary between plosives and fricatives or approximates va, va, and ra, and codoplosives are pronounced as the latter allophones as well. Instead of a normal ya sound, Spanish has the sound ya, which is allophonically ya, and pronounced sha or ja in some dialects. But outside of that, Spanish lacks the sounds sha, ja, and ja, as these sounds in Old Spanish shifted to the velar fricative ja, which is uncommon among Romance languages. There's also the dental fricative tha in some dialects, particularly ones in Spain, which came from Old Spanish tza and za, and later merged with tza in most Spanish varieties. There's also a distinction between trilled r and the tap r between vowels. Syllable final sa and r are often reduced to ha in rapid, casual speech in many dialects. Spanish has the basic five vowel system but it also allows a wide variety of consecutive vowel pairs, and between words, vowels are often assimilated with each other, in a process known as sinalefa. Sequences ye and we are common, formed from old stressed e and o, but when these vowels were unstressed, they merged with e and o, which is evident in irregular verbs where the vowel alternates between e and ye and o and we, depending on where the stress lands. The most iconic feature of Spanish orthography is N tilde, called Enye, for the palatal nasal. Most Spanish dialects have lost ya, merging it with ya, but words that used to have it are still spelled with LL as opposed to Y. The velar fricative ha is represented with J and soft G. GUE and GUI represent ge and gi respectively, while U with diaresis is used to indicate when the wa is pronounced, as in gue and gui. Spanish uses cu instead of qu for qua, but does use q and que and qui for que and qui. Since Spanish has no distinction between ba and va, both b and v represent the same sound. And upside down question and exclamation marks are often used at the start of sentences to complement their non upside down counterparts. Spanish word order is relatively free with regards to pronouns, with verb-object-subject sentences being pretty common. While possessive pronouns inflect for gender and number, possessive determiners only inflect for number and are much more common. Third-person possessives are neutral with both the person and number of the pronoun itself, with unstressed su and stressed suyo. Demonstrative pronouns have a designated neuter form, which refers to prepositions, facts, or general ideas, and both direct and indirect objects can be suffixed to verbs in their infinitive forms and with imperatives. A few adjectives have shortened forms used directly before nouns, such as grande shortening to gran and bueno shortening to buen. Most Latin American Spanish dialects have no separate second-person plural conjugation. Spanish has a relative lack of contractions compared to most other Romance languages, and there's a significant amount of words from Arabic from when the Moors ruled over Iberia. There are two Spanish Creoles, Chavacano, spoken in some parts of the Philippines, and Palenquero, spoken in a small part of Colombia. And of course, I need to mention Silvo Gomero, a form of Spanish native to La Gomera in the Canary Islands, which is actually whistled. There's also Roquetas Pigeon, Llanito and Castrapo, which are forms of Spanish spoken in Gibraltar and Galicia respectively, Spanglish, which is any mix of Spanish and English, and Portuñol, which is a mix of Spanish and Portuguese. Speaking of which, Portuguese is next, spoken in Portugal, Brazil, Angola, Mozambique, Cape Verde, and a few other places. 
Portuguese stands out with its nasal vowels a, e, i, o, and u, um, and has a lot of diphthongs too, both oral and nasal. There are a significant number of differences between the pronunciation of Brazilian and European Portuguese. For starters, in Brazilian Portuguese, word final unstressed e and o are pronounced e and u, while in European Portuguese, final e is pronounced u. European Portuguese is also very stressed timed where stressed syllables are significantly longer than unstressed ones, making it sound like unstressed vowels at the ends of words are dropped. Vowels not at the ends of words in unstressed syllables are reduced to a, e, u in European Portuguese, while Brazilian Portuguese has a, e, i, o, and u. Whenever a vowel comes before nasal consonants like ma or na, the vowel is pronounced nasalized in Brazilian Portuguese. Both varieties of Portuguese stick out with their lack of ya or wa glides, outside of the sequences gua and gua. The rhotic trill is shifted to ra, ha, 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 or a few other sounds depending on the dialect. And in Brazilian Portuguese, coda ra is often reduced to ha or dropped when part of verb infinitives. Coda sa is pronounced za before voiced obstruence, and is pronounced sha or ja in many varieties. There are standalone sha and ja, but no cha or ja phonemes, only present as consonant clusters in loanwords, though in Brazilian Portuguese, ta and da palatalize to cha and ja after e. nh is used for nya, and lh is used for ya. Sha is represented with ch and x, the latter of which may also represent sa, za, xa, or xa. The letter s is pronounced za in between vowels, and ss is used to indicate sa in this context. The sa phoneme is also frequently written with z or c cedilla in Portuguese. Nasal vowels are often indicated with a tilde, especially when stressed, or as their corresponding oral vowel followed by m when not followed by a consonant, and n before consonants besides p or b. Acute accents are used to indicate open mid-vowels a and a, while circumflexes are used for closed mid vowels a and o, as well as a. Intervocalic e and u are pronounced ya and wa, and at the ends of words are stressed e and u respectively. In Portuguese, first names are preceded by definite articles, and in some varieties, doing this with the name of the person you're talking to can mean you. While the definite articles in Romance languages typically start with la, they start with vowels in Portuguese. Brazilian Portuguese is losing the second person informal pronoun tu and its corresponding verb conjugations, being replaced with você, and the second person plural vos is also old fashioned now, being replaced by vocês. O senhor, a senhora, os senhores, and as senhoras are being used as formal second person pronouns instead, meaning the mister and the lady, with singular and plural forms. There are also personal infinitives, where pronouns are used before the infinitive instead of the verb being conjugated, and these are used after various prepositional phrases. Portuguese also has perhaps the highest number of contractions out of any major Romance language. This extends to contractions for pairs of direct and indirect object pronoun clitics, which are sometimes suffixed to verbs with hyphens. There's also the progressive, which in European Portuguese is formed with estar a, followed by the infinitive, while in Brazilian Portuguese this is formed with estar, followed by the gerund, like in Spanish and most other Romance languages. Portuguese also forms most names of its weekdays with ordinal numbers followed by feira. And like in Spanish, there's a significant number of words of Arabic origin. Portuguese has a closely related sister language, Galician, which is spoken in the Galicia region of Spain. There are also a lot of Portuguese-based Creole languages, namely <gasps> Papiamento, which also had Spanish influence, Cabo Verdiano, Guinea-Bissau Creole, Angular, Fohu, Principensi, Damanandio Creole, Christi, Cristam, Sri Lanka Portuguese Creole, Coralai Portuguese Creole, Caranore Portuguese Creole, Macanese Patois, and that's not even including all the ones that have gone extinct. There's also Baja Kenyu, which is a variety of Portuguese mixed with a lot of influence from nearby Spanish dialects. Next, I'm going to talk about Asturian. Asturian is spoken in the Asturias region of Spain and is part of Asturleonese, a group of related languages which also includes Leonese, spoken in the Spanish region of Castile and Leon, Cantabrian, spoken in the Spanish region of Cantabria, and Mirandese, 
which is spoken in a small part of northeastern Portugal. Extremaduran is also sometimes included in this group, and you know what? I'll just give you a map of the regions of Spain and let you take a wild guess as to where Extremaduran is spoken. All of these languages aren't the majority languages of their respective regions, though, as Spanish and Portuguese in the case of the Andes tend to dominate. I'll be focusing mostly on Central Asturian for this section. Asturian phonology is fairly similar to that of European Spanish, with five vowels, the dental fricative th, and voice plosives, which have voiced fricatives as allophones. There's also sh, which is written with x, a h sound, written as h with a dot, and Western Asturian has a sound that varies from tsa to za to even retroflex cha and da, normally spelled l dot l, as the sound originates from a doubled l. Its orthography is also very similar to that of Spanish. What isn't similar to Spanish, or most Western Romance languages for that matter, is the fact that Asturian has a neuter gender. Inflections for masculine nouns tend to end with u, feminine inflections with a, and o is usually neuter. Neuter nouns can be divided into masculine neuters and feminine neuters, ones which have a masculine or feminine form and take on those genders' respective articles, and pure neuters, which refer to nominal groups with adjectives and neuter pronouns. Neuter nouns usually refer to abstract, collective, and or uncountable nouns, and have no plurals except in cases where they turn masculine or feminine. Plurals are formed both by changing the vowel and adding sa, with the masculine singular u becoming plural os, and feminine singular a turning into plural s. And there are object pronoun clitics like in Spanish and Portuguese. Compound tenses are rarely used in Asturian, with simple tenses being preferred. There's a ye and o we verb alteration, and adverbs are often formed from adjectives with their neuter ending of o, or with the suffix mente. Next I'll be talking about Catalan, which is spoken in Catalonia, the Valencian community, the Balearic Islands, Andorra, and that one town in Sardinia that people in the comments will yell at me for not mentioning. Like Spanish, ba, da, and ga vary between voice plosives and approximates. In untrust syllables, Vowels a, e, e reduced to a, and a and o reduced to u, at least in the Catalonian and Balearic varieties. There's also ela geminada, a long la sound, which is written as l with middle dots, though this is often merged with plain la. Catalan uses the digraph ny to represent ña, tx for cha, tz for za, tll for ya, and both tg and tj for ja. Digraphs IG and IX represent cha and sha respectively after vowels. Catalan uses acute accents to mark stress, except for a, e, and o, which are marked with grave accents. Word final R is also typically unpronounced in the Catalonian variety. Nouns and adjectives end in consonants very often in Catalan, and there are quite a few word final consonant clusters, though they're often simplified in speech. Coda consonants also get devoiced affecting masculine and feminine pairs for nouns, like amique and amiga for friend, and nebot and neboda for nephew. Catalan has personal articles preceding people's first names, though their presence varies between dialects, and also uses definite articles before stressed possessive pronouns. The simple pass is now literary in Catalan, and the periphrastic pass is now used instead, formed with the verb ana, meaning to go, which in other Romance languages marks the future instead of the past. There's also the special neuter pronoun o and a set of adverbial pronouns used in a variety of constructions. While most Romance languages have definite articles with la in them, in the Catalan of the Balearic Islands, there's a set of definite articles with sa instead. Rounding out all the Iberian Romance languages are fala, another Galician Portuguese language spoken in northwestern Extremadura, Aragonese, spoken in the Spanish region of Aragon, Mindarico, spoken in the town of Mindi in Portugal, and Scalo, which is a mix of the Iberian Romance languages and Romani. There is also Ladino and Haketia, spoken by Jewish communities, and the now extinct Mozarabic, which developed among Muslims in Al Andalus. Next, I'll be talking about Occitan, spoken primarily in southern France. Occitan is not a unitary language, mostly thought of as a group of related dialects, some of which may be considered separate languages. The six main varieties are Languedocian, Provençal, Vivaro-Alpin, Auvergnon, Limousin, 
in Gascon, which is the most divergent and often considered its own language. These are collectively referred to as Long Doc, as opposed to the Long Doyle, which refers to the Romance varieties of Northern France. Unfortunately, like many of the minority languages featured in this video, Occitan is endangered, in this case threatened by policies in France promoting French and only French to be spoken. The dialects of Occitan have no O sound, as it shifted to U, and the old U sound shifted to U. There's also the front-rounded open mid vowel E, present in some of the Occitan varieties. The phoneme A also often becomes A when unstressed in the final syllable of words and in some varieties is all in all unstressed contexts. There are plenty of diphthongs in Occitan, and glides ya, wa, and ye, which combine a lot of said diphthongs. There are siblets sa, za, tsa, cha, and ja, and sha appears in a few varieties. There's also a va sound, but merged with ba in some dialects because the voiced plosives can allophonically be fricatives, for like the third language in a row. Voiced obstruents get devoiced at the ends of words in Occitan, and there are a few word final consonant clusters, though they often get simplified. Since U was historically O, it's written with the letter O. To distinguish open mid E and O from E and U, bravs are used. NH is used to write the palatal nasal ña, and LH is used for ya. Cisadia is used for sa sometimes. And unlike most Romance languages using that letter, it can appear at the ends of words, like in bras, faus, and tros. N is silent at the ends of words, and M is pronounced na in that context. Surnames are also marked for gender, with the feminine version marked with a. There are different subjects, direct and indirect objects, and possessive pronouns and clitics. When negating verbs, the verb is surrounded by non and pas, though oftentimes the non is dropped, leaving just pas. Next up we have French. It's spoken in France in many of its former colonies, including lots of Africa, French Guiana, Quebec, and parts of Oceania and the Caribbean. French has the most oral vowels out of any major Romance language, with 11 in the French spoken in Paris and up to 13 in some dialects, with said dialects distinguishing A and O and short and long E. It sticks out with its front routed vowels, namely U, E, and E and has nasal vowels en, en, and on in Parisian French, with e present in other dialects. French has a schwa sound, which is often elided, causing syllables to span between the boundaries of words. The French rhotic is very unique, being either a voice uvular approximate r, voice uvular fricative r, and in some dialects can be a voiceless uvular fricative r in some contexts. There's also the labial palatal approximate y, seen as the semi-vowel counterpart to U. French affricates sa, cha, and ja became fricatives sa, cha, and ja, although cha and ja reappeared in some loan words as consonant clusters, and labiovelar qua and gua became plain ka and ga. Words have been heavily reduced from their Latin origins, with consonants and vowels at the ends of words being shaved off, although something called liaison happens in French, where with many of the lost vowel consonants, they reappear if they come before a vowel. French spelling is infamously tricky, especially with all the silent consonants and e's at the ends of words. There are many digraphs and trigraphs which represent vowels, notably ai for a, au and eau for o, ou for u, as well as oi for wa. French also has plenty of diacritics, with the acute accent being used on e to represent a, a broth to represent a, that is also used to distinguish homophones on A and U. A circumflex and E circumflex are used to indicate A and E, but these have merged with A and E, and as a result, are primarily useful alongside I circumflex, O circumflex, and U circumflex for telling apart homophones. Finally, there's the ligature OE for the sound E, which has the exact same symbol in the IPA, and Cisadia for SA. GN is used for the palatal nasal. An IL used to represent the palatal lateral approximate y, a sound which shifted to y. Whenever the schwa in a word is elided, it's typically indicated by removing the space and putting an apostrophe where the e for the schwa used to be. French has a relatively high number of homophones in monosyllabic words compared to other Romance languages. There's a lot of inflection in French that's distinguished in spelling but pronounced the same, 
including plural marking on nouns and personal conjugation for verbs. Although plurals are still marked on articles, where the distinction between the masculine and feminine genders is neutralized. There's a whole set of partitive articles, which are used with mass nouns. And because personal inflection is often the same, French is one of few Romance languages which is not pro-drop with its pronouns. The simple past is historic, and the past perfect or passé composé is used instead nowadays, which is formed with a past participle perceived by avoir for most verbs, and être meaning to be for some verbs of motion. French infinitives can end with a, ir, r, or war, but can't end in ar, unlike in most Romance languages. Much like in Occitan, verbs are negated by placing na before them and pa after them, though na is typically dropped. With the vocabulary side of things, there's been a significant influence in the vocabulary from the extinct Celtic language Gaulish and to the Germanic Frankish language. Numbers 70 through 99 are infamously wonky in French, with 70 for 70 literally translating as 6010, for 80 as 420s, and 90 for 90 being 42010. Being the language of an empire that has subjugated and brutally oppressed people from all over the world, people who it still economically dominates alongside its new imperialist allies, French has had a lot of creoles based on it. There are Haitian Creole, Mauritian Creole, Seychellois Creole, Antillian French Creole, Louisiana French Creole, Grenadian French Creole, Réunion Creole, Saint Lucian Creole, French Guyanese Creole, Caribuna French Creole, Agalega Creole, Chagossian Creole, Rodrigan Creole, Tayo, Chiac, Michif, Confranglais, and the extinct Sabir. The dialect of French spoken in Quebec is also very distinguished to say the least. The other long doyle of northern France include Picard, Walloon, Lorrain, Norman, Gerrier, Orne, Sarkiazi, Champenois, Orlanais, Tourangeon, Bétichon, Bourbonnais, Bourguignon, Franc-Contois, Angevin, Gallo, Pontevin, and Saint-Tronger. These are all part of the Gallo Romance branch, of which Arpitan is also a member of, and is spoken in the Aosta Valley region of Italy and across the border in France and Switzerland. Speaking of Switzerland, that's where Romance is spoken, the next language to be talked about. It's recognized as one of the four national languages of the country, and is spoken in parts of the Swiss canton of Grison. It's considered to be part of the Rideau Romance branch, alongside Ladin and Frugulian, which are spoken primarily in Italy. Romance has five dialects, Sur Silvan, which is the most spoken, Sud Silvan, Sur Miran, Buter, and Valader. There's also Romance Grishun, a standard created in 1982 that is currently used in radio broadcasts and news publications, but isn't used at all in colloquial speech. There are at least seven vowels in all dialects, with Buter and Valader both having U and E. There are a total of 11 diphthongs and 4 triphthongs in Sursuvan at least, and untressed vowels in Romanche, typically reduced to schwa. Voiced obstruents get devoiced word finally, and fricatives sa and sh become voiced za and j between vowels. There are two phonemes, which may be either palatal affricates tsia and tsia, or palatal stops kya and kya, both distinguished from cha. The glottal fricative ha occurs in a few interjections and load words from German, and the velar nasal is phonemic in surmiran. The rhotic is either a trill r or uvular fricative r. Romanche follows a few German spelling conventions, notably Z for Tsa, SCH for Sha, and TSCH for Cha. The palatal phoneme Tsia is written as either TG or CH, and the letter S can represent either S or Z depending on voicing, and before certain consonants is Sha or Zha instead. Plurals are formed by adding Sa to the noun, and Romanche has collective plurals, which refer to nouns as a whole. All reflexes in Sur Suvan use the pronoun Se, whereas in most Romance languages, it's only used in the third person. Possessive pronouns in Romanche change between the predicative and possessive, though only in the masculine, while their feminine forms are the same. Interestingly, Romanche also shares some grammatical features with German, such as adjectives not being distinguished from adverbs, the verb being moved to the beginning of a sentence or clause in some contexts, and quoted speech using the subjunctive mood. There are also a lot of Germanic loanwords, especially since most Romanche speakers can also speak German. Next, I'll be talking about the languages of Italy, 
including Italian. All across Italy, there are many regional Romance languages spoken, and are used alongside Standard Italian, which was based on the Florence dialect of the Tuscan language. In general, Standard Italian is the sole language of media and education, and is used in formal contexts and for talking to strangers, while the regional languages are used colloquially in more informal situations. This can be considered diglossia, where speakers know different forms of the same language and use them differently based on the context, although these usually refer to regional languages and their dialects, not dialects of standard Italian. The regional languages aren't used as often in the north of Italy or in the major urban centers, and are spoken more often in the south, rural areas, and by elderly people. These regional languages are unfortunately all on the decline everywhere in Italy. The Gallo-Italic languages make up most of the regional ones spoken in northern Italy, which include Piedmontese, Ligurian, Lombard, and Emilian Romagnol. In other branches, there are Arpitan, Ladin, and Friulian, all of which I've mentioned earlier. Venetian is unclassified within Romance, and Sardinian forms its own branch. The remaining languages of Italy are all Italo-Romance, including Standard Italian. Its main divisions include the Tuscan-Corsican group, which includes Tuscan, spoken in Tuscany, and Corsican, spoken on the island of Corsica, and has two dialects spoken in northern Sardinia, Galuris and Sassaris. Then there's Central Italian, which includes Romanesco, the regional dialect native to Rome, Southern Italian, which includes Neapolitan and its various dialects, and Extreme Southern Italian, which includes Sicilian and Calabrian. Italo-Romance forms the wider Italo-Dalmatian branch with Dalmatian Romance, which includes Istriot and the extinct Dalmatian language, both native to Croatia. With that explanation out of the way, it's standard Italian time. What sticks out most about Italian phonology is gemination, which entails having doubled consonants, which were lost in most other non-Italic Romance languages. Italian has seven vowels, of which the closed mid and open mid ones aren't distinguished in unstressed syllables, and the vast majority of nouns, adjectives, and verbs all end with vowels. Intervocalic sa is typically voiced za in northern and central dialects, while geminated sa between vowels remains voiceless. Italian maintains word initial clusters with sa, as in spa, spra, sta, stra, ska, and scra, which had an a inserted in front of them in many other Romance languages. It also sticks out with the glides ye and especially wo, like in miele and buono. Palatal nya is written with gn, gia with either gl before soft i and gli before hard a o u, and similarly, both sc and sci can represent sh. The soft c and g are ch and j respectively, and those letters are indicated to be soft before a, o, and u by adding an i between the letter and the vowel, and made hard before e and i with h. Z can represent either tz or tz, and the grave accent is used to mark stress on vowels, except for close mid vowels, which use acute accents. Masculine nouns in Italian typically end in o, and feminine nouns end with a, and to mark plurals, final a and o turn into e, and a typically turns into a. There are also some Italian nouns that are masculine in the singular, but turn feminine in the plural, with the final vowel turning into a. Italian articles are a bit complex and depend on the initial sound of the preceding noun in addition to its number and gender. Feminine nouns simply take the definite la in the singular and le in the plural. Masculine nouns take il in the singular and e in the plural, except before certain consonants or consonant clusters, in which case they become lo and gli respectively. And both masculine and feminine il and la become l before vowels. Indefinite articles don't inflect for the plural, so we just have un for masculine nouns, which turns into uno for tricky clusters, and una for the feminine, which turns into un before vowels. Like French, there's a whole set of partitive articles, and some verbs use essere, to be, to form the perfect, instead of the typical avere, meaning to have. As you can tell, since most Italian words end in vowels, infinitives end with e, yielding are, ere, and ire. Italian has a lot of contractions with prepositions, such as with di, a, in, con, and su. Possessive pronouns are usually preceded by definite articles and go before the noun, unless to convey emphasis, in which case they're placed after. Like in mamma mia, speaking of very Italian things, 
Italians often use hand gestures in conjunction with speech to convey certain meanings. Next, I'll be talking about Neapolitan, which is a regional language spoken in southern Italy. Strictly speaking, it includes the dialects of metropolitan Naples, the rest of the region of Campania, and a bit of southern Lazio. But there are other southern dialects that could be considered parts of Neapolitan as well. It is fairly similar to Standard Italian, since they're both Italo-Romance, but with plenty of distinguishing features. For one, vowels at the ends of words are heavily reduced, with final a, e, and o all essentially being merged to schwa, and are sometimes dropped from words altogether. Neapolitan also features gemination, and sticks out with consonant doubling at the beginnings of words, particularly after the neuter singular and feminine plural definite articles, as well as certain prepositions, adjectives, and conjunctions. A few Neapolitan nouns have the neuter gender, which before definite articles are only distinguished from the masculine by initial gemination, and there is no neuter plural. The masculine and feminine plural articles are also only distinguished with initial consonant doubling. Initial voiceless stops can also be voiced when coming before certain words ending with vowels. When S comes before non-alveolar consonants in Neapolitan, it's pronounced SHA before most consonants. Voiceless obstruents PA, TA, KA, TA, and CHA all become voiced BA, DA, GA, DA, and JA after nasal consonants. The apostrophe is used a lot when writing Neapolitan when denoting reduced vowels or dropped consonants. The letter J is used to represent the sound Y, like in most Germanic and Slavic languages. Neapolitan uses the grave accent to mark stressed open vowels A, E, and O, but typically uses an acute for E, I, O, and U. Indefinite articles start with N instead of something like UN, and indefinite articles start with vowels before consonants, and L before nouns starting with vowels. Because word final vowels are unstressed schwa, adjective inflection for gender is typically indicated with a change in the stressed vowel. Neapolitan has a set of possessive suffixes, which are used when talking about family members. While formally infinitives end in are, ere, and ire like in Italian, the re is often dropped, leaving a, e, and i. Also, I'm legally obligated to mention that funicoli funicola was written in Neapolitan. Next up is Venetian, spoken in the Veneto region of Italy, which includes the city of Venice. As I mentioned earlier, there's no consensus for which branch of Romance it belongs in. Some say it's Gallo-Italic, others say it's Italo-Dalmatian, and others say it forms its own branch. Venetian has dental fricatives th and th present in the speech of older and rural speakers, but these sounds shifted to tz and z or s and z for other speakers. Venetian also has two L sounds, one ordinary and the other weakened, being pronounced more like a non-syllabic E, and written as L with a stroke. It may also be merged with normal la or dropped entirely. Word final N is pronounced as the velar nasal N, and it is also the pronunciation of N in consonant clusters with it, as in cantar and inverno. The distinction between close mid and open mid vowels is also in Venetian, and near open A is present as well. Subordinate clauses have double introduction, literally translating as when that, which that, among others, instead of just when or which. Since in many Venetian verbs, the second and third persons have the same forms, redundant subject pronoun clitics are used to distinguish between them, making Venetian not pro-drop in this sense. There's a special interrogative form of verbs for asking direct questions in Venetian, sometimes incorporating more subject pronoun clitics. There are also many Venetian words that have been loaned directly or indirectly into English, including Lagoon, Casino, Gazette, and the name for Montenegro. Smooth transition to talking about Sardinian that doesn't use either of the two transitions that I've been using for practically all of the languages in this video. Sardinian is spoken in Sardinia, particularly in the parts that don't speak Corsican, Catalan, or Ligurian. Every Romance language I've talked about so far is a part of the greater Continental Romance branch, but Sardinian forms its own insular romance branch, and is considered to be the closest out of all romance languages to Latin. There are two main varieties of Sardinian, Logodoris, spoken in the northern part of Sardinia, and Campidanese, spoken in the southern part of the island. The varieties of Logodoris include Nuoris, which can be considered its own subvariant and is considered the most conservative out of all dialects. A proposal for a unified standard form called Limba Sarda Comuna was made by the regional government but isn't universally accepted. 
While most Romance languages rewrote Latin's five short and long vowels into seven vowel systems, length was directly lost in Sardinian, yielding a, e, i, a, and u. Although mid-open e and o became pronounced as close mid e and o when any e and u comes after them in the word. In Campidanese, final e and o raised to e and u in many contexts, but didn't cause metaphony, leading to separate phonemes for e and o. Vowels are also lengthened whenever stressed, especially in open syllables. As for standout consonants, there's retroflex da, which appears geminated in between vowels and came from Latin double la. Some dialects of Nuoris also have the voiceless dental fricative fa. Labioveolar stops qua and qua shifted to ka or ba in locutoris and Nuoris, and wa shifted to ba in most dialects. Outside of Campidanese, there was no palatalization of ka and ga to other sounds before e and i, unlike in most Romance languages. Phonetically, between vowels, particularly at the start of words, voiceless plosives pa ta ka become voice plosives ba da ga or fricatives va da ra. And phonemically voiced plosives can become fricatives or be drops altogether. Fricatives fa and sa can also get voiced va and za in these contexts. And in varieties where la may also be lenited, it's often strengthened to form double retroflex la. Sardinian uses j to represent the palatal proximate ya, x for ja in varieties that have it, and tz for tsa. Plurals in Sardinian end in sa, sometimes changing the final vowel. In Sardinian, definite articles and third person pronouns have sa instead of la, like most other Romance languages. Infinitives end with are, ere, and ire, but are reduced to i and e in Campidanese. Many verbal inflections are formed with periphrasis, i.e., spreading it across two or more verbs instead of having their own designated fusional suffix. Nowadays, mainly the indicative present, subjunctive present, imperfect, and indicative future retain their own designated non-analytical forms. The passive voice is limited to formal situations in Sardinian, with an impersonal subject pronoun typically being used instead. And there's a relative lack of adverbs, with a few that are present usually being formed by reduplication. Next, let's talk about the Eastern Romance languages. There's Istro romanian spoken by a thousand people in Croatia, Megleno romanian spoken by a few thousand in a region including northern Greece and southern North Macedonia, and Aromanian, which is spoken in pockets across Albania, North Macedonia, Greece, and Bulgaria. Of course, by far the most spoken and well-known Eastern Romance language is Romanian, spoken primarily in Romania and Moldova. Being isolated from the rest of Romance, these languages have all developed distinctive features influenced partly by the surrounding Slavic languages in the area, among others. Romanian and the other Eastern Romance languages are notable for having a ha sound that's actually pronounced. Romanian has seven vowels, including schwa, which can be stressed unlike other Romance languages, and the close central vowel y, which is also present in Aromanian. There's also a lot of diphthongs and triphthongs, notably including glides with non-syllabic a and o. Romanian also has an abundance of palatalized consonants, appearing especially at the ends of words. While currently written with the Latin alphabet, Romanian used to be written with the Cyrillic alphabet, up until the 1800s, and again in Moldova when it was a part of the USSR. It's also still in official use in Transnistria. Nowadays, Romanian represents U with I circumflex at the beginnings and ends of root words, and A circumflex elsewhere. Other Romanian diacritics include A with a brav for schwa, and S, and T, for sha and tsa, respectively. I at the ends of words usually just marks palatalized consonants instead of being a full-on vowel, except in verb infinitives and after consonant clusters. Otherwise, ii is used to represent e at the ends of words, and between vowels, i represents ya. Romanian has neuter nouns, but these are merely nouns that are the same as masculine nouns in the singular, and the same as feminine ones in the plural. In the singular, masculine and neuter nouns most commonly end with vowels and sometimes with u and feminine nouns commonly end with a. The plural forms of nouns are pretty unpredictable in Romanian, but the plural forms usually end with i and sometimes e. While the indefinite articles are their own separate words like in typical Romance languages, the definite articles are suffixed to the nouns they modify. Romanian also retains grammatical case for nouns, with the nominative, accusative, genitive, dative, and vocative, 
although the forms are shared between the nominative and accusative, as are the genitive and dative. Article inflections change for case in addition to gender and number. Similarly, adjectives and demonstrative pronouns also inflect for case, at least in the feminine singular. Adjectives can also take the definite suffixes when used on their own, as do names and proper nouns occasionally. To distinguish the genitive from the dative, a possessive article is used, which again agrees for gender and number. Pronouns in the accusative and genitive cases have dressed and untressed forms, and there's a set of polite pronouns and a different set of emphatic reflexive pronouns. Romanian has many different verb conjugation classes, and infinitives follow the preposition a. Similar to French and Catalan, the simple past is now literary or dialectal. The pluperfect in Romanian is formed synthetically instead of analytically like other Romance languages, as opposed to the future forms which are formed by compounding. There's a distinction between the subjunctive mood and the presumptive mood, the latter of which specifically expresses hypothesis or presupposition. Because of close contact, there's been a significant amount of Slavic influence with regards to vocabulary, with between 10 and 15% of Romanian words being of Slavic origin, including very basic ones like da or yes. There are also plenty of nouns from other languages in the region, including Turkish, Hungarian, Greek, and Albanian. There was a push in the 1800s to re-Romanize the language, and this led to many French words being loaned in. After discussing all of the major living Romance languages, it's time to talk about Latin, the ancestor of all of Romance. Latin has short a, e, e, o, e, and long a, e, e, o, u, for a total of 10 vowels. Its primary diphthongs are i, oi, and au, on top of a few other rarer diphthongs. The consonant inventory is small compared to its sentence, with no affricates or post-alveolar fricatives. There were labioalveolar stops in the glottal fricative ha, however, and many consonants could be geminated. There was no v sound, as this was wa in Latin, before shifting to a voiced obstruence in its descendants. Originally, the Latin alphabet only had capitalized letters, and was written carved into marble. Both U and V could originally be used in free variation for the vowel U in short or long form, or for the consonant wa, before they became used separately. C originally represented both K and G before the letter G was added, and these consonants were always plosives in Latin. There were also Y, Z, CH, PH, and TH, which were added for Greek loanwords. Latin had six cases for nouns, with the nominative, accusative, genitive, dative, ablative, and evocative. The ablative formed from a merging of three cases in Indo-European, with the instrumental and locative merging with the original ablative, and as such, the ablative in Latin retains all of their uses. There were also masculine, feminine, and an actual neuter gender that could be pluralized, and adjectives agreed for case, gender, and number. Latin prepositions could put nouns into the accusative or genitive cases, and because of the case's impersonal agreement, there was a very free word order. There also were no articles, or separate forms for the infinitives of verbs. Verbs had six main conjugations, the present, imperfect, future, present perfect, pluperfect, and future perfect, spread across the indicative and subjunctive moods. Passives were also very prevalent in Latin, and many of them had their own designated suffixes instead of being formed by periphrasis as they are in all modern Romance languages. Before I forget, I should give a quick mention to African Romance for previously existing and probably being pretty cool when it did. And with that, this broad overview of the Romance languages is finished. To be frank, I'm not writing much of an outro because this video is more than long enough already. These are all the sources I've used, which you can find in the description. Thank you to all the Romance language speakers who helped out with giving feedback including Fernit0505, Precisa Jisu, Polomu, Skymine, Eoioanist, Sofia Lapanocha, Eliza, Looptail G, Matone, Patavinus, Morkogu, Sovi, Piali, Pingu, and Ngabe. Thanks to my boyfriend for doing audio editing, and thank you to all my Patreon supporters for Royce, Dope Kid, Sunter, Eric Sim, Adam Zinek, Junior Kwan, Teo Tamera, Vadim, Alexis Asgeris, and Riltinek. And until next time, adios, adeus, hasta tempues, adeo, adieu, au revoir, 
Arvair, Arrivederci, Ceverima, Saudi, Adiosu, La Revedere, and Wale.